Hi everybody, Mr. T here again. I found this uh, log in my big pile of horse chestnut logs I got from a neighbour. At first I thought it looked a bit plain, but looking at it more closely, it's got quite a lot of little interesting bits in it. Uh, but I just, but uh, it's not square at the end, so we're going to turn this between sensors. It's going to be a hollow form. And I'll be using my new homemade uh, hollowing steady rest jig, whatever you like to call it, system, um, which is <laughs> basically <coughs> excuse me, a converted um, roller steady rest that I, I don't use. <coughs> excuse me. I don't use because um, I don't do long things really. I have to do small hollow forms. I'm looking to do some bigger hollow forms if I can get some decent bit of blank. But in the meantime, we're going to get this uh, set up to centre it and we'll uh, find the centre. We're back in the workshop now, it's uh, slightly warm in here, but before we start I shall deploy my DPB dust collection system. Now I've got this, uh, I've been using this for years, ever since it started, but um, I noticed when I was watching uh, Phil Anderson at Shady Acres Woodshop uh, last night and uh, he has the same system and this, I, I mentioned it to him and he said I should paint the name DPB Dustpan and Brush It's the most efficient dust collection system and it costs virtually nothing because everyone should have a dustpan and brush somewhere in the house Borrow one from the missus if you need to it's a very effective, very quick way of defragging the workshop bench or the lathe or whatever. Quick dust over and everything's all ready to go. Dispose of that in the uh, plastic bag. I'm not worried about the floor at the time being, but I do like to have the bench clear before I start. Starting off with a lathe at zero. Um, that well pushed in. time so I'll, uh, I'm not going to show all this it's pretty rudimentary turning low speed handle down whoops there's a lump there
As you can see, the uh, bit at the end is only held on by a couple of prongs, so on the on the prong drive. So I'm not taking any chances. What I've done is turn the tenon. And I'm now going to part that off, so then I can mount that directly into the chuck and carry on rounding the piece and, and shaping it. I've uh, not filmed a lot of this because it started getting a bit of a problem. Um, but yeah, there's a bit of bark there which I might remove completely or I might leave it in. Uh, but we've got basically down the basic shape that we want. Uh, there's some nice little bumps in that but then again I might <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet uh, uh, I haven't decided I never decide anything for the time being yeah the problem is the uh, the lathe keeps speeding up and slowing down it's the speed controller motor that's the problem As if it gets any it seems to have cured itself but if it if it does it again or gets any worse I shall get back onto the manufacturer and see what uh, I have to say. Is this is what speed control is two years old. So, 18, 19, 19. I'm not sure if I'm not sure when I bought that now. I'll have to, I'll have to double check. Anyway, that's uh, all be it for the so That's all I'm going to do for the time being. And we'll be back to this possibly tomorrow. See how we get on. I'm the centre out now with a 30mm force a bit. my hollering rig that I've made. Um, cutter. Just an old drill. But it's not the best. But it does. Set this up. I need to drop this fraction. It a fraction. So it doesn't, this is supposed to slide freely without rocking about. The only problem with the game of this lathe is it's a modified short bed lathe modified from a long bed lathe so there's not a lot of room with tail come it takes a nuisance to take the tail sack off I'm going to change the cutter anyway, but uh, we're going to have to modify this as we go. Uh, 
as a look at the rig. Just some bits of tubing, a bit of wood, some threaded bar, and uh, that sits in there, rests on the tool rest. You can remove that around, but unfortunately, it hits the tail stock here, which you can't see. But uh, I think with a little bit of modification, it's also offset, so I can turn it the other way so I can get the swing the other way. But at the moment, I'm going to change the cutter. Right, I've offset that the other way round. I've changed the cutter to a Simon Hope 6mm cutter uh, with a different bar and this one. I think I'm going to have to get the um, Curves bar. It's okay for just pulling it out. I can't get around the corner. So I need to get around the corner. see of that but, uh, but actually done quite it's opened up a fair bit I've uh, put the other cutter on which I can now running it a little bit shorter I can actually swing it in and work inside Great advantage of this is I can just stand, stand normally and don't have to lean over the lathe. Get that swing around there. Save my back. At the moment, I really can't afford to buy the the proper gear, the proper rig, but I will keep playing with this until I get it right. I can't see my hands in the way. Just need to hold that on the rest to manipulate it with the other hand. Best to stop it if 
before taking it out. Otherwise you can catch the cutter. There's lots of dust coming off there, not shavings, but it's it's coming. It rounds about here now, about that far round. So I'm quite happy with that. I've cut this piece too, I've made this piece too long basically, the lathe is too short and using my Glint Eagle hollowing tool um, the handle hits the tailstock now it's a bit of a a nuisance to put it that way on these uh, record power machines to take the tailstock on and off all the time as the you've got to get the bolt to line up in the right place every time otherwise the handle's in the wrong place so once it's on as far as I'm concerned it's on and it's staying there so we're going to shorten this off now I've marked a scribe a pencil with a line there so I'm going to part this off and remount the piece back in the chuck but I'm going to do that off camera Right, I've cut a new tenon on that, shortened it down by a couple of inches. The handle only just clears the tailstock now, so I might might have to uh, cut a piece off the end of the handle. But um, we've still got a lot of way of uh, things to develop on this rig, but at least it works now. I've now found I can actually use the Simon Hope um, hollowing system, mini, the mini hollower in this rig but not to hold the handle firmly but just as a rest so I can move it up and down a little bit and it will slide about. Um, the thing is to keep this waxed so it does slide but I can going to try, I'm not going to uh, film this bit because you can't really see anything inside, but I can. At least I know. I, I'm going to try it anyway, and uh, see what happens. I can get the, the curved tool around and inside there, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes, and we'll come back because I'm. I'm all over. I'm, I'm in the way of the camera. Whichever way I look at it, I'm in the way of the camera. That's a way of getting shavings out and blowing them out with the airline and getting dust everywhere. I mean, it's just going to do a little bit more. I'm using the Simon Hope Mini Hollower uh, art tool. Just, I'm just going to do a little bit more in there. I hope you can. Hope I'm not in the way of the camera. <laughs> I tend to drop my hand and lift the thing up. It's purely involuntary action. I can't help it. Um, as I lean over, I tend to I tend to do that. Like with this thing, I can stand fairly upright. Just use my hands. But uh, I might just carry on with that. Anyway, I think you've seen the the idea of it. Now I'm going to do a part two, in which case I'll be 
I'm going to carry on uh, hollowing this out, get it nice and thin. I'm going to possibly pierce a section and do some colouring. We'll see how I feel in the next few days.